episode three of the Red Chair Knits podcast. My name is Colleen, and I will be your host for this podcast about knitting, crochet, and all things yarn. I'm coming to you today, as always, from my red knitting chair uh, here in my home in Pennsylvania. Uh, it is currently a kind of gray overcast afternoon, so I'm hoping that won't interfere with our light too much. Uh, it is Sunday, November 27th, so happy Thanksgiving to all of my American viewers. Uh, I spent the holiday down in Charlottesville, Virginia with my younger sister, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we did a takeout turkey dinner, uh, no cooking involved whatsoever, and we hung out in our sweatpants, and we did get to FaceTime into our family's Thanksgiving out in California, even though we weren't able to be there in person, and I believe we were much more comfortable than everybody who had to dress up for company. <laughs> uh, we did go Black Friday shopping, which is not something that I usually do. It's something I usually would actively try to avoid. <laughs> I try to avoid shopping in general, unless it's for yarn. Um, we did not go yarn shopping, sadly. I tried to talk my sister into visiting a yarn shop, but she was not going for that. So we drove over to Richmond, Virginia and went shopping because my sister says the shopping is better there than in Charlottesville. Um, I bought a couple of things, uh, one of which is this sweater that I'm wearing now. You can't really see it very well. I'm going to stand up so you can see how long it is. Oh, see I'm short. You can't really see it at all. So it's kind of mid-thigh. Um, and it is an alpaca merino blend, which means it's basically like wearing a hug, is how I've been describing it. And I'm probably not going to take it off for most of the winter. Uh, earlier this year, I discovered that my favorite fall and winter sweater, which was a 100% cashmere uh, turtleneck, um, unfortunately had developed holes in the sleeve. Um, I think it happened when it got dry cleaned. Uh, that'll teach me to hand wash things instead of dry cleaning them. Um, but yeah, so I needed something warm and cozy to replace my lost warm and cozy sweater. Uh, so this is some of the things I bought. Uh, my mother is going to call Christmas presents. Uh, this is not one of them because I wanted to start wearing it immediately because it's fantastic. Uh, so, yeah. And other than that, we just kind of hung out and spent some time together. I did not get as much knitting done as I thought I would, uh, which is unfortunate because I'm on Christmas deadlines. But it was just really nice to spend some time with my sister. But now I'm back, and it is absolutely Christmas from here on out. The tree is up, uh, most of the decorations are up, not all of them, but um, I have the lights on the tree, I have the ornaments up, um, I'll have a couple more decorations. You may see some back here um, in my next podcast. Uh, so I'm still trying to figure out where everything goes in this apartment because this is my first Christmas here. Uh, the other thing that the Christmas season means for me personally is that it is time to make fruitcake. Now I know, I know what you're thinking. Hear me out. My fruitcake is not like that stuff that you buy in the store. If it has neon colors in it, it is not a fruitcake. Um, candied fruits, not a fruitcake. What I make is a real old-fashioned fruitcake with a lot of different dried fruits. Um, I use apricots, cranberries, cherries, golden raisins, currants, um, a couple others that I'm probably forgetting at the moment. Um, and you start by soaking them in rum. So you can't go wrong with a recipe that starts that way, right? 
Uh, the only reason they're not currently baking is that I made the same mistake that I make every single year. One of these years, I'm going to remember that the first step of my fruit cake recipe is to let the fruit soak overnight. You would think that I would remember that basic step when I'm planning when I'm gonna make my fruit cakes. Apparently not. I have yet to have a year where I've gone to make the fruit cakes and haven't looked at the recipe and gone, oh, forgot to soak them overnight. So I will be making fruit cakes at some point this week. Um, not tomorrow because I won't soak them tonight because I know I won't have time tomorrow to do the baking, but later in the week. So, and I will make myself a special note and still probably forget next year and have to push back the baking again. Um, I want to get them done within the next week or so because they sit for about two weeks to develop their flavor. Uh, they're not bad if you eat them early, they just, they get better as they sit. Um, and I want to finish them in time that I can give them to some classmates who have been making fun of me for talking about fruitcakes. Uh, because everybody has this idea of what a fruitcake is. I've never had anybody who tried my fruitcakes who said that they were bad. Um... In fact, most people, one of the reasons I make so many now is that almost everybody who has tried mine has asked for more. So definitely not your grandma's fruitcake, <laughs> or at least not the one your grandma bought from the mail order catalog. Because that's what my grandma did. She always sent my dad fruitcakes that she had bought um, out of these mail order catalogs. And we really didn't like them as kids. And it wasn't until I discovered that fruitcake actually was not made from things that came in those little tubs in the grocery store with the neon colors and the nastiness um, that I realized that fruitcake was actually a delicious holiday treat. <laughs> uh, but you're not here to talk about baking, are you? Uh, we are almost eight minutes into this recording and it's time to get to the knitting. I don't have any crochet to show this week. Um, it's been all knitting all the time since I finished that gigantic crochet blanket that I showed in my last podcast. So I have two finished objects this week. Um, one of them you've seen before. One of them was a new cast on last night. Uh, so I'm going to start with that one. So this, if you subscribe to Yarn Crush and you haven't gotten your November 2016 box yet, you're probably going to want to look away if you don't want to be spoiled. Um, so turn around. Okay. For everybody else, this is the... I guess, yarn and project that came with the uh, November box for my Yarn Crush subscription. And I just, I couldn't wait to cast it on. So this is Knit Collage. Um, I believe these are hand spun yarns. So there's the tag. This is their Pixie Dust yarn um, in the amethyst colorway. Uh, I believe it's called Pixie Dust because of the sparkles, which I think you can see in there. Oh yeah, that's picking up nicely. I'm really happy with the color. Um, I like the sparkles. I have to say I didn't love working with this yarn. Um, I wanted to. I really wanted to love this. Um, this is a cowl, and I just, I felt like the yarn was fighting me with every stitch. I also ran out of yarn. Uh, the pattern tells you to knit to a certain length and then put in the buttonhole. Uh, I did not get, I think I had to stop five inches short of that length, uh, because there was no way that I was going to have enough yarn. Um, as it is doing it this way 
after weaving in ends and binding off and all of that, this is what I had left over from the yarn. That's it. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I wanted yarns that were outside my comfort zone, which was why I subscribed to a, a yarn service. And this is definitely outside my comfort zone. It's fun. The finished product is fun. I don't know. It's, it's a good size, so it still fits. Oh, it looks nice. I looked at it in the mirror last night when I finished it, but huh. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the whole bulky hand spun thing. Maybe it's because I'm not a spinner, so I've never worked with hand spun before. It was certainly a quick knit. I cast it on at probably 9.45 last night. Um, and I haven't blocked it. I don't know if I'm going to. I might get a little more length out of blocking it. Um, I have a pretty small neck, so it works for me. And nobody else online was complaining that they ran out of yarn. So it could just be my knitting style. Uh, but yeah, so that's one finished object. And I think I'm going to keep this for myself. uses gigantic needles. I know they're not the biggest needles out there. I've certainly seen bigger in the craft store, but these are size 17 uh, or 12 millimeter uh, bamboo needles. They're straight needles. Um, and these came in my yarn crush box, uh, which I really appreciated because, so typically you get a bonus gift with your yarn. Um, you don't usually get the needles for your project, but I think because this was a yarn that called for needles that most people probably don't have on hand, they included these needles. Uh, they also included a size O uh, crochet hook, um, which I don't have handy. Um, but yeah, so it was nice that they included those. They also included this button. Uh, I don't know. The more I look at it, the more this thing is growing on me. I just didn't love working with the yarn. Um, and it could just be the needles. I'm not a huge fan of bamboo. Um, I find, I don't know if you can see if it's going to focus. You can't see it really, but the ends are already dented up. And I don't know if that's my knitting style or if that's just what bamboo does, but I've never had a pair of bamboo needles that didn't do that. So this was the pattern that I knit that came in the box. It's the Cool Whip Cowl by uh, Leah Kochari Stewart. Swift, sorry. I don't know why I said Stewart. Um, and yeah, it's a nice pattern for this yarn. I'm really glad that it comes with patterns because I would never have known what to do with that yarn. Um, so exploring new things. My other finished object for this week, I'm very excited to have done and it's completely done. Ends are woven in, it's been blocked the whole nine yards. And that is my pure joy. So let me get this unfolded. Ta-da! I don't know how best to hold it so that you can see all of it. Let me lean back here. So this pattern is the Pure Joy Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And it is exactly as the name describes. It was a joy to knit. I loved it. Um, I was concerned about the size as I was knitting it. Uh, it's a habit that I always fall into. Uh, I never trust that things are going to block out to the size that I need them to be. So the pattern said that it was supposed to, you're supposed to be able to block it out to, I think it was 82 inches long and I think 14 inches deep. 
after blocking, this was 15 inches. I believe it was 12 before blocking. So I got three inches in depth. And then this was somewhere in the 60s uh, before blocking. I think it was like 60 or 62 inches. Uh, I didn't quite get to 82, but I didn't block it super aggressively either. Uh, so I believe it's 78. I just keep showing it because I'm so in love with the way it, it finally worked out. Um, the yarn is a fingering weight yarn by Kiwi Pop Studios. Um, and the colorways are, this main colorway is called Joy. And then the contrast colorway, um, which you can see better over here. This is, this one down here is burgundy. And this is, I wish you could feel how soft this was. It's such a nice yarn to work with. It has a gorgeous drape to it. Uh, it is absolutely perfect for a shawl. I'm trying not to get it in the candle. That would be terrible. I'm not great at styling shawls. There we go. Yeah, that, I, as I said, not great at styling them. My sister, of course, is a little bit of a fashionista and she will have a much easier time styling this, <laughs> which is why it is for her. So that is another Christmas knit down, um, I believe. So that and the blanket that I showed last time makes two Christmas knits down uh, and I think four to go. Yeah, four. So I'm making progress. Um, I'm not as far on my Christmas knits as I would like to be at this point, but you know, it's coming along. So moving on to whips, my works in progress. I have two to show this week. One, I was really, really hoping that this would be a finished object this week. Unfortunately, I got a cold this week, um, and it was a pretty bad head cold, which made focusing pretty difficult, and I was on the lace border section of this shawl, and after undoing the same row like three times, I realized I needed to set it aside for a little while. So... It also, it's not going to show very well because it's so bunched up on the needles. But this is my morning yearning shawl. Um, the pattern is by Sarah Rose, uh, who is Yarn Poetry on Ravelry and Instagram. The main yarn color is Christmas Morning. This is another Kiwi Pop uh, yarn. And I don't know if you can see the sparkles, um, but it does sparkle. And then this contrast color down here that I'm doing the lace in, this is three Irish girls in their colorway, I believe, Azalea Orchid. And I am loving the way both of these knit up. I'm really loving the way they work together. I've put in a couple rows, so I kind of tried to blend it in. So I started incorporating the contrast color before the border, just so that it wasn't such a stark difference. And I think it's working pretty well. Um, I'm really excited to see it off the needles. I have, I think I just finished row 12 of the 21 or 22 row repeat uh, for the second lace repeat and so as soon as I finish that I will be binding off. Um, I will absolutely have this as a finished object the next time I podcast because the goal is to wear it to our school's holiday party 
which is this coming Friday. So I'm going to be working pretty monogamously on this for the next couple of days to try to get it done and hopefully done in time to block it. Um, I don't know that it'll need the size, but of course it's got a lace border and blocking just makes lace come alive. So that's one work in progress. The other work in progress that I have, um, I'll show you really quick. I don't think there's a whole lot to see showing this each week. So I may just not show it again until it's done. This is the Irish hiking scarf that I am knitting for my younger sister. This would have been the perfect project to take over Thanksgiving and work on while we were hanging out. Unfortunately, it's for her. So this is where I was two weeks ago and that's how much I've gotten done, uh, which is not bad considering I've mostly been working on this in between classes uh, when I'm out of the house because it's such a basic pattern. So I can get it around once at this point. I want to make it extra long because when we were shopping on Friday, she indicated that that was something she really liked was really large sh uh, scarves. So in retrospect, I kind of wish that I had actually made this wider because uh, I think that's more what she's looking for. But hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. And I didn't know that at the time. So I still think she'll like it. Um, and I'll just make it extra long so she can wrap it up as cozy as she wants. So that is all I have for works in progress. I did not yet cast on my mom's shawl. Well, I did cast it on. And I didn't love the way it was working, um, the yarn and needle combo that I was using. So I pulled it out and I have not cast it on again. Um, so hopefully I will have some progress on that to show next time we podcast. Because that is a Christmas present. Um, I have decided for my dad, I am going to make him a pair of felted slippers. I'm sure most of you probably watch Amber, who is the Yarn Hoarder podcast. And on her most recent episode, she talked about felting. And she showed these felted slippers that she was making for her husband. And they just reminded me a lot of the types of slippers that I would see my dad wearing when we were kids. And so I thought it might be nice to make him a pair. And since he was the one that I was really struggling with what to make him, I thought that that would be a good thing to do. So I have not actually ordered the yarn for that yet. Um, I'll probably do that this afternoon or tomorrow in order to catch Black Friday sale, uh, which seemed to be going on all weekend. I'm really having to force myself to not buy a lot of fabulous indie yarn this weekend because it seems that all my favorite people have put yarn on sale. Um, unfortunately, I am kind of running out of the limited space that I have to store yarn. So really trying to exercise some self-restraint right now. <laughs> so saying you'll probably be back here in two weeks watching me show off some acquisitions. I hope not because I really, really, my couch is covered in yarn right now. The shelves put yarn go in, that was not even a sentence. The shelves that my yarn goes on um, are kind of overflowing. I think some of that is just that I'm not terribly organized at the moment, but some of it is that I really need to crack down and work through some of this. So, that being said, um, other future knitting. Sorry, I have my show notes sitting on the ground today, so that's why I keep glancing down that way. Um, before we move on to future knitting, I do have some acquisitions to show this week. Um, I mentioned in my last podcast that last weekend I was headed to a woolen vine trunk show. Um, at Do You Knit in New Jersey, 
which is a fabulous yarn shop. Um, that was my first visit. I did not get to do a lot of browsing, but I will absolutely be back. Um, and hopefully Kristen will do another trunk show there so I can pick up some more yarn. Uh, but let me show you the woolen vine yarns that I acquired this past week. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to expect um, because as I mentioned, it's so hard to get your hands on Kristen's yarn that I wasn't sure if it was overhyped or what I would find at this trunk show. Um, there were a lot of people there. Um, I think it was very successful for her. I was surprised to hear on her latest podcast that she had yarn left over after the trunk show. Um, but I bought four skeins. So here's the first one. This is her footsie base. And the colorway is Yarn Pimp X, which is a colorway that was inspired by Karen, who owns Do You Knit. Um, this is the 8020 uh, Superwash BFL and Nylon Blend. I have no idea what I'm going to knit with this, but I love pink, and I saw it on her podcast and knew I had to get a skein of this when I went to the trunk show. So I did. Uh, the next one that I picked up is another in her footsie base. This is one of her holiday colorways. This one is called Deck the Halls. I just, I can't get enough of holiday yarn. And this was the only holiday colorway that she brought, at least that I saw. Um, so I grabbed this one. Um, and it's, it's kind of subtle, but really, really nice. So there was that one. And then I bought two on her blitzed base, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold stellina. So here's this one. This is Enjoy the Silence. And I think you can see the sparkle. And then also on the blitzed base, I bought Mexican hot chocolate. And I actually bought this one because I thought it went so well with the Enjoy the Silence. So these are going to be a shawl for me, absolutely. And actually, as it turns out, Kristen is hosting a Vulinvine yarn shawl along. So here's my shawl. I am not 100% sure what shawl I'm going to knit with these two. I'm considering making a Pure Joy because I loved the pattern so much for my sister. But I think I would use a circular or semicircular or... Um, a triangle shawl more than I would use um, the, I guess, crescent shape of the Pure Joy shawl. So I'm going to think on that for a couple of days while I work on finishing my morning yearning shawl. Because um, I believe the shawl along for Fool and Vine runs through the end of the year. And I think the rules, as I recall them, are you can knit any shawl you want as long as you use wool and vine yarns, or you can use whatever yarn you want to knit a specific pattern that Kristen has put out. Um, I can't remember the name of the pattern, uh, but I think I will be using these to make a shawl of my choice. And I'll tell you, I walked out of Do You Knit and I felt so proud of myself. I thought, you know, I had a budget 
and I spent well below that budget. Um, I went with a friend and his girlfriend and I actually taught him to knit that day. And so he's working on some placemats right now that he wants to make for his grandma. And then he bought two skeins of woolen vine yarns to make something for his girlfriend. Um, I walked out and I told him, I said, you know, that was, I, I spent less than I thought I would. I'm proud of myself. And some of it was that he finished picking his yarn very quickly and I didn't want to make them wait. So I didn't do a lot of browsing. I kind of made some executive decisions and went with it. Um, by the time we got home, I was thinking to myself, I should have bought more yarn. I should have bought more yarn. Why didn't I buy more yarn? <laughs> and ever since then, I really feel like I should have bought more. I regret not buying anything in her super soft Volca base. Um, and so I will absolutely, uh, I'll continue to try to catch her updates online. Uh, but all else failing, I really hope she has another trunk show at Do You Knit. This was the second one she's done. I think they've both been successful. And obviously, um, it's a great store. So, Kristen, please come back. <laughs> I promise I'll buy more. I'll make sure you don't have any leftovers next time. <laughs> okay. So those are my only acquisitions. Uh, from the last two weeks. I did order uh, a couple other skeins of yarn, but they are coming from a dyer in England. So I will hold off talking about those until I actually have them in my hands. Um, and so I think the only thing that I had left that I wanted to talk about today was a couple of future knitting plans. Um, I mentioned that I'm making a shawl for my mom and I showed the yarn for that. Um, I believe I showed it in the last podcast, um, episode two. Uh, what else am I making? Sorry, let me grab my show notes. You have to find a better place to put my show notes. Um, oh, yes. So I will be casting on my shawl for the woolen vine shawl along. Which means that the colorway that I showed you last time, um, actually I think I've showed it in both of my last two podcasts. I'll show it once more for the last time until I actually cast it on. The Northern Lights colorway uh, from On the Round, uh, who if you're watching this on Sunday, she is having a sale this weekend on all her yarn. Um, I think it's 20% off. So if you're watching this on Sunday, you should go catch that sale. Um, some of my other favorites that I've showed on previous episodes, um, Beautiful Mess Yarnworks is having a small business sale this weekend, as is Kiwi Pop. Um, and I think she actually still has one or two skeins of that sparkly Christmas morning colorway that I'm working with. Um, I am trying really hard not to buy anymore because all of those are dyers who I sent out on my Christmas list to my family. So I'm hoping that there will be some of that waiting for me under the tree this year. Um, that's total digression. Support indie dyers, support small businesses. There's that. I'm going to set this aside. I was going to cast this on. At first I was going to make a Pebble Beach shawl. Decided that wouldn't really be the best shawl for this yarn. Um, I have decided when I do cast it on, it will be, I believe it's called the Imagine When shawl. Um, it's another Hohi Locatelli pattern. Um, I think, as with everybody, I have been bitten by the Hohi bug. Uh, love her patterns. But I'm going to put this off until after the new year because I want to get in on that wool and vine shawl along. So this goes away. Uh, the other things that I will be casting on, and hopefully we'll have most of these cast on by my next podcast, will be those slippers for my dad. 
um, the Gramps cardigan that I would like to make for my baby cousin, who I will be seeing shortly after Christmas for the first time. Uh, I have not cast that on yet. I have the yarn. Um, hopefully we'll be starting that soon. The other thing that I am planning to make is a stocking for my brother-in-law. I don't remember if I've talked about this before or not. Uh, my sisters and I have these beautiful hand-knit stockings. They're, I think we measured them last Christmas when I was thinking about making one, and they are about 24 inches uh, long. So they're good-sized. They were hand-knit by a, how to describe the relationship. She's my cousin's grandmother. So not my grandmother, but my cousin's grandmother on her other side. Um, and she, I believe, used to sell them. Uh, but she knit them uh, for me and my older and younger sister. Um, obviously, my cousins have them. Um, another set of cousins have theirs as well. And so I thought it would be nice if my new brother-in-law had one that matched because last year he had a um, kind of felt thing that my sister picked up at the grocery store. And so it, it did its job. It held the little candies and knickknacks that my mom still puts in all our stockings. But I thought it would be nice if he had one that looked more like it belonged. Um, so that's going to be his Christmas present this year. I went online and I found these great patterns. So these are by Mary Maxim, which I'm sure, I'm trying to avoid the glare. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Mary Maxim. They were really big, I think in the 70s with their, um, with the sweaters, with the big deer and moose and whatever on the background. Um, so they also do these great stockings and these are their vintage stocking patterns. Um, and I bought four books of them. So there's a lot of patterns here, uh, which is great because it's a lot of choice. Unfortunately, it's a lot of choice and I still haven't made up my mind. I started making one. Let me see if I can find the picture. There it is. I started making this, this one, the white one with the ornaments. And I think it was just the yarns that I was using. I did not love the way the colors were playing together. Um, it looked very, I guess, American flaggy. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I didn't think it would go with the look of the rest of the stockings. So I'm still debating which one I'm going to be making him, uh, but I really need to get that cast on soon. I did a test one months ago just to see if I liked working with the patterns before I invested in all of these books. Um, and I think I finished that one in about a week, working not super obsessively on it. So I'm not worried about the time, I'm just worried in the context of everything else that I need to knit. So, yeah. That's all the knitting that I have planned for the rest of 2016. I'm working on a list of things to make in 2017 when I do my year of me knitting um, and do a project for myself every month. I am planning to make socks. I know I mentioned in my last podcast that I I'm not really a sock knitter. I've never made a pair. It's not something that, I don't know, it's not something that really, I don't know how to describe it. It's not that it doesn't appeal to me. It's just because I wear a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just not something that I've ever done, but I feel like it's something I should do. And so I am going to make socks. Um, if for no other reason than apparently last winter I promised one of my classmates <laughs> that I would knit her socks and she occasionally reminds me of that. Um, 
So I actually have yarn for that already. I picked this up last year when I first promised to make her socks. It's just a basic uh, yarn. It's loops and threads, wool-like yarn. Um, I bought it at Michael's. I didn't want to spend a huge amount when I wasn't sure if I would like sock knitting. Um, one of the things that I ordered from uh, England that isn't here yet is a skein of sock yarn to make socks for me. Um, so I did go nicer for my socks. <laughs> Sorry, Jackie, if you're watching. But you will get socks. <laughs> so there's that. I'm trying to find where it tells me what this yarn is made of. Oh, there it is. It's 85% acrylic and 15% nylon. But it's actually pretty soft. Um, it's a fingering weight, so I will see how I like knitting socks. Um, I have a set of DPNs for sock knitting. I, I don't know. What do you guys recommend for beginning socks? DPNs? Magic Loop? I don't think I want to try 9 inch cirques right off the bat. Um, I tend to grip my needles a lot when I'm knitting and I just don't think that those would be the best for me. At least not at this stage. Uh, but if anybody has any preferences of Magic Loop or DPNs, let me know. Um, otherwise I'll probably just go with the DPNs that I have. So. That's kind of it for this week. It's a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, I'm sure I said um too many times and rambled a bit, but thank you for sticking with me. Uh, as always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Colleen Diane 12 And if you have any questions at all about what I uh, talked about in the podcast uh, or anything really, I feel free to comment below or send me a message. And other than that, I hope you all enjoy what's left of this holiday weekend here in America. And if you're not in America, the rest of your regular weekend, I guess. And I will see you all in two weeks, hopefully with a lot more Christmas knitting underway. <laughs>